this is second lecture of computer organization subject uh, we have couple of topics here we'll basically get introduced with the different modules of a computing system they're mostly the most important parts of any basic computing models so any modern computer okay has these components arithmetic logic units clock system model memory system model register file model which you can we will see will derive it from the memory system model but they are kind of same or similar in nature and last but not the least control system model so these one two three four five five different subsystem are basic fundamental component you will find any computing system in the world okay so knowing them and understand those module functionality their functions in the overall system is very important uh, to understand a computing system and how it works so let's start with the arithmetic and logic unit uh, the name suggests itself all the computations are gone through this specific module this specific module is responsible to compute all the arithmetic function that a computing system does perform and all the logic function as well it performs a computing system performs through this module any program software program or any hardware however complex it seems like and however advanced it seems like for example like facebook or media streaming application like youtube anything and everything goes through this specific system why because any software you can think of basically can be uh, can be broken down into bunch of arithmetic and logic operation nothing more nothing less any any complex software program is practically a series of arithmetic and logic operations between that be it a streaming application be it a gaming application be it a web application it doesn't matter at the end of the day all the software programs are bunch of arithmetic and logic operation in fact later we'll see there is nothing like an arithmetic operation goes inside a computing model everything is logical operation we'll see that but till then let's stick to this module have capability to perform arithmetic and logic operation that we need in any computing program so as i said it provides the fundamental functionality of a computer so let's think of uh, this module from an api perspective i believe all of you have some knowledge in the in the software programming and you have used uh, most of you know java most of you some of you know c c++ uh, python and other scripting or programming languages and in any language right there are a bunch of library support which gives you some fundamental operation so this library provides you some sort of api or function footprint what do you say right either class class methods or or a function itself standalone function like in c uh, what they provide you are saying that for example here i am giving you an c example of an api it is a c language and itself my function name or api name is alu and i can call it by passing four parameters the second third and fourth is specifying my operand value one and operand value two two operands right and operation code this code may be predefined like some value may be represent addition some subtraction etc etc the first argument is um, is we need to understand this one this one is not very uh, uh, very obvious to most of you guys who are uh, familiar with the java uh, this is a passing an 
argument by reference means when you pass a variable by reference so inside the function the function implementation can go and change its value where the other other arguments second third and fourth argument they are not passed by reference they are passed by value that means inside the implementation the implementation can access the values of these these variables but and also locally can change its its value but it's it will not go and change the value of this variable uh in the in the caller space uh, as i say but if someone is calling by passing by arguments then inside the function this function can change the value and that change of value be reflected back at the caller side okay so that's the pass by reference <coughs> method uh, pass by reference way in c language okay so this api takes four argument operand 1 operand 2 operation code and the result is returned into into a uh, into a variable okay and and its return type is void okay void means it doesn't return anything so this is again a c specific uh, uh, language specific uh, construct here but the, the basic meaning of this this function does not return anything any value is returned through and and parameter okay so from a library api perspective when you use it in a software the application program as you are writing and use this function you really don't bother about how it performs this this operation isn't it so you just know that if i pass to value and pass an operation code say addition then this function will add up these two operand values operand 1 plus operand 2 that's that two values it will add and the result will be reflected back in my my first variable that's all right so <coughs> but if you are a library provider means who is writing this api for for clients to use for for application program to use you may implement this specific function in this way this is one of the implementation it can have many many form uh, what is this is inside this what is this this is a switch uh, operation i believe java also has that this is basically if else if else kind of uh, block if you are unsure please uh, search in uh, in internet and see what is a switch case operation looks like this is the switch case format of of the c language but it is essentially what it is doing it is basically checking the operation code and if it is matching with let's say this is a hex uh, value 0x20 if this matches with a hexadecimal value 20 it basically does a addition similarly if it gets a hexadecimal value of 22 it uh, does a subtraction and so on and so forth so it does lot of other operation as well and these codes are predefined so both uh, this uh, this library implementer and the client who is writing the application software has knows about this code okay so it's not arbitrary it is kind of an uh kind of a signed off and and guaranteed between uh, implementer of the library and uh and the application writer okay so they know that they need to know about this code okay so inside this it does like this right so this is from the software perspective now think this api being implemented at the hardware level means you are given some electronic component or electronic device where you pass three values operation operand 1 operand 2 and operation code and it gives you back the result of the operation just think like that okay so it's kind of an analogy so we have a black box we don't know what is inside it right now we don't care what is inside it what all we are interested to know what it does okay so this electronic component electronic device takes two operands one operation code and gives the result right so by the direction of this arrow you can say okay where where these operand operands or values are flowing so it is they are flowing in and another value is flowing out so it takes two or three input input uh information 
and crunch out one output information. This is what we call an interface diagram for the ALU. Sometimes we also call it a schematic diagram of the ALU. So whenever we talk about the interface diagram, schematic diagram, we mean the same thing. Okay. So software plus we write in the form of a function signature. In the hardware, to convey the similar concept that I, hey, I'm building a device, which if you supply me three value, then it gives me, gives the result, arithmetic or logic operation result back between two operation, uh, two operand. So that's the concept, okay? So, for example, uh, this ALU is, we are uh, seeing that we are also added some more information on top of this, like this 6, 32, 32, and 32. This means is that the operand I am supplying, both the operands, operand 1 and operand 2, they represent value in 32 bit. Okay, So a bit is a binary digit, which is electrically represented as a, a presence of voltage and absence of voltage. This is 0 and 1, presence of voltage is 1, absence of voltage is 0. And by combining 32 signals, such signal, 32 bits, we can represent a large amount of values from 0 to 2 to the power uh, 31, basically. So, no, actually, I'm getting, I'm taking it back. We can represent 0 to 2 to the power uh, 32 minus 1. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, so we'll 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 review review this back when we will be studying about the number systems where we will be uh, learning about how what is a binary number system or is the hexadecimal number system. We'll be dealing with that in details, but here the basic point is that with combination of six, 32 individual bit, you can represent a huge number of huge amount of values, like huge range of values, I would say, uh, zero to some some very large number. You can represent zero, you can represent one, you can represent two, and so on and so forth. And operation code is six bit. So why it is not 32 bit? Because we don't need to have 32 bit. We have only handful of operation code, like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine different values we want to represent and later once we know about the number system we'll see six bit is more than sufficient to represent this these nine different values okay so that's why we put six values okay and also we are saying that my result is of 32 bit okay so 32 bit operand one 32 bit operand two six bit operation code and 32 bit of result now, this ALU is so special component, it has a very specific representational structure. Okay, it, it, it looks like this, kind of an A. Okay, A for ALU, you can remember this way. So, either you can draw a rectangle and just write an ALU there to denote this is an arithmetic logic unit, or without writing that, you can just draw this special structure, which everyone in the world knows this is ALU. Okay, and it, again, it supplies OP1, OP2, the result and operation code, and little difference also. Drawing these thick arrows is kind of very time consuming and it's not necessary. So, a faster way to draw that is basically a single arrow, okay, and then you cross that arrow like a slash with a slash and write down how many bits there. So, this represents a group of 32 bit signal okay so for the one bit representation you don't need this just one straight arrow line is sufficient to represent one bit okay this is only for the group of bits if you want to represent together this is how you do okay so we don't do a thick arrow drawing we do a just a plain old arrow with a slash and we denote the number of bits there to to represent a group of signals 
or okay so this is how we draw so as a computer science student you should be able to draw this very fluently okay so remember this this structure and later later we will actually combine many of these structure together to understand the computational concept and what is the relation between different component in a computing system so please be be attentive to this uh, be attentive to this structure and practice drawing this all right so this goes for any other any other component uh, we will be, we'll be reviewing or we will be starting here uh, you need to practice drawing okay that's very very important in this class